hello friends uh, welcome to the third section of uh, village level irrigation canal design uh, in this section uh, we will uh, discuss on scheme water requirements previously we talked uh, on crop water requirements and uh, soil water holding capacity uh, using the contents of these two sections uh, we will uh, determine uh, the water requirements of a scheme In general, the net water requirement is determined as a depth of water and is normally given in millimeters. As losses occur and water may not be used continuously, additional water other than the net irrigation requirement must be diverted from river. Consequently, the net water requirement plus any additional water is called the total irrigation requirements. This section will utilize the crop requirements determined in section 1 and the soil water holding capacity determined in section 2. For example, this amount 7.4 mm per day. Peak crop over transpiration considered in far design steps, as we have talked about previously in the first section and first video. And also in section 2 soil water holding capacity considering the soil texture and the uh, uh, readily available moisture that uh, we talked on in a second section of this tutorial okay to uh, provide a simple method of determining the flow of water per second requirement for each irrigation period at scheme entrance To calculate the net scheme water requirement, the following variables and data needed to be known. The total net area to be irrigated in hectares. For example, an area where we want to uh, have uh, a canal or a scheme, for example, is uh, 1000 hectares. And the average size of field plot per family in hectare, for example, one plot uh, for uh, per family is five hectares and the main crop where uh, we uh, consider is uh, corn uh, and the peak crop water requirements for corn we will calculate and the working hours of the farmer per day for the application of irrigation water that uh, we will consult with the and discuss with the Canal controller that uh, how many hours per day uh, he will uh, be working on the irrigation and uh, uh, the remaining uh, time be considered for other maintenance work and the soil integrate that uh, we discussed uh, in soil water holding capacity.
this uh, so integrate uh, was previously discussed uh, and talked on so uh, we consider at this point for further design process in uh, uh, this third value The following steps will guide the field engineer to determine the net skin water requirements. But for design purposes, you need to determine the total skin water requirement. This could be done adding 20% as a guideline for losses in the main canal. Therefore, you multiply the net skin water requirement by a factor of 1.2 to give you the total skin water requirements. Considering the situations uh, and uh, several other factors, this uh, factor 1.2 may vary and differ. Anyway, step number one to determine the net irrigation, refer to section two. Determine the texture of soil by feeling it with your fingers. Use table to one in section two to find out the net irrigation per meter of depth. For example, if the soil you have examined happened to be heavy textured, in this case it is 97.5 mm. Let's refer to this table. For example, if uh, we have uh, uh, the soil texture in the side heavy, So we will uh, have a 97.5 mm, the readily available moisture as uh, we uh, talked uh, about uh, in this uh, section. And from table 2 to and section 2, find out the root depth for the main crop grown. If the main crop is corn, then the root depth would be 0 0.75 meter. Let's refer to this table. The root depth we have for corn 0 0.75. For example, if this uh, corn is, uh, if this crop is considered in our area as a reference crop. Calculate the net irrigation that would be applied at each irrigation for the crop. You simply multiply x total root zone dipped by heavy texture soil factor 97.5 mm. It means we multiply 0 0.75 multiplied by 97.5 mm. For uh, safe side, we consider 1 meter instead of uh, 0 0.75. In step 2, once you determine the net irrigation, next step is to determine the frequency of irrigation or interval of irrigation. Frequency of irrigation equals to net irrigation divided by reference crop evapotranspiration. If the peak crop water requirement is 6 mm per day, then as we in the first uh, video at the end, we calculated 7.5 mm. As per thumb rule, we uh, consider just 6 mm per day. We also consider the same amount as well. And net irrigation. 97.5 mm is multiplied by 1 meter instead of 0 0.75 meter. So, frequency of irrigation equals to 16 days. This means that the farmer should apply water every 
16 days. In step 3, determine the number of plots that could be irrigated in one day. Total number of plots equals to total irrigated area. For example, as we had, uh, we said, maybe it is uh, 1000 hectares, uh, 500 hectares, and etc. Uh, divided by the number of hectares per plot. For example, as we said, 5 hectares per day. Uh, one plot is uh, one plot is five hectares. If, for example, the total area to be irrigated is a thousand hectare and the area per plot is five hectare, then the total number of plot plots equal to two hundred plots. In step four, now we will determine how many days are required to finish applying irrigation water to 200 plots. Here you need to find out from the farmer or a canal controller how many days is spent on maintenance and other farming activities during an interval of each irrigation. In other words, for how many days out of the 16 will irrigation not be possible? For example, if 6 days is required for other farming activities by the farmer, this means that the application of water to the thousand hectare must be completed in 10 days. Remember to always consult the farmer or canal controller to determine the irrigation period. And in step 5, next is to determine the number and total area of plots that we have to irrigate per day. Number of plots irrigated per day equals to total number of plots that we calculated 200 plots per irrigation period that we consulted and talked with the canal controller and he said that he is um, working 10 days on irrigation, irrigating of uh, the area and fields and the remaining six days are uh, considered for other maintenance works and is not able to irrigate the fields. So from the example about the total number of plots is 200 and the irrigation period is 10 days. Therefore the total number of plots irrigated per day equals 200 plots per 10 days. It means 20 plots per day is to be irrigated. Therefore since one plot equal to 5 hectares, 20 plots will give us a total area to be irrigated per day of hundred hectares and in step 6 determine the total volume of water to apply per day if every day 20 plots or 100 hectare is irrigated with a total depth of 97.5 mm or 0.0975 meter so the volume that we obtain is 97 1500 cubic meter. And step 7. Now determine the rate of flow in uh, cubic meter per second required to fill the 100 hectare of land with a volume of water of 97,500 cubic meters. We divide this volume by the time. The time is 10 hours per day. As we discuss and uh, consult with the controller, that every day he can irrigate daily uh, the fields and plots. So now determine the rate of flow in a cubic meter per second required to fill the 100 hectare of land with a volume of water of 97,500 cubic meters. We get the flow rate, the volume uh, divided by the time, which time that uh, we talk with the and consult uh, with the canal controller, and he says that uh, just uh, ten hours per day he can consider for uh, getting the plots. So the volume which uh, we obtained ninety seven thousand five hundred cubic meters, we divide by the time, which is. 10 hours 
hours uh, could be changed to seconds so we achieve 2.71 cubic meter per second so this is the amount that we wanted to find considering this discharge or the capacity of the scheme that we wanted to so this is uh, the capacity of scheme and the discharge amount that we wanted to know based on this we then after uh, consider the cross section dimensions through which we can convey this amount of water per second and then after we go forward for further steps in canal design in this section we were able to determine the time a particle scheme needs for irrigation then by finding the volume and dividing it by the time needed we calculated the rate of flow required by the scheme with this information we are now able to begin the next section topography thanks so much